Welcome to part number 31 of Gran Turismo 5 B-Spec. This is the Moving Chicane, and today we're going to be doing the Japanese 80s festival. You guys might notice that I barely have any money now. And that's because in the UCD, I bought myself a Mazda MX-5 for the roads to 4 hours later, and most importantly, found me this. Pescarolo Courage Judd GB5 race car. Already gave it a engine overhaul and chassis overhaul, all that rigidity, whatever the hell it's called. And uh, yeah, that's what I spent all my money on. So now we just need to find another car for Le Mans, Nürburgring, and like the wind. <laughs> I need to get myself quite a few LMP cars for the game because I don't want to use repeat cars. But anyways, Soviet 240 RS is what we're using for this championship. Courage? It's just pronounced courage, not courage. Oh, interesting. Okay. I could have sworn I, I heard somebody say it was Courage, not Courage. Alright, well, whatever. Anyways, two races at the Eddie's Festival. Autumn Ring and Deep Forest. Autumn Ring is the first round. And as you can see, we hired Mr. Gran Turismo himself, Cousin Yamauchi, as part of the team. Did some level grinding with him. He's not feeling that good. So let's get Fernandez in the field. So yeah, as you can see, a bunch of 80s cars. I mean, I kind of expected a little bit of a stronger field, but I mean, this will do, I suppose. It's a lot of like Honda Cities, Toyota Sprinters, Celica 2000 GTR, Sylvia Q, Sylvia K in the front, okay. But really, I thought we were going to get maybe like a Celica GT4 or like an R32 89. Next driver should be Yide. <laughs> We're not hiring any more drivers. All the slots are already filled. Alright. No blue screen this time. Hooray. So let's make Fernandez pace up and away we go. Did someone say initial D? <laughs> Kaz should be the bluest of blue. Yeah, Kaz is not feeling that good right now. For whatever reason, it's probably burnt out from all the GC Sport updates and all the people hating on his new content. No blue screen. Oh, I said blue screen. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I meant to say black screen. Sorry, I've been stuck on that one song that Marvin has as his notification that uh, Windows error rap beat. So Fernandez stuck in six right now behind the city. Finally gets up to 5th. I think he'll be able to get him into this corner. Yep. Come on, just squeeze your way through, dude. Why is this race so long? <laughs> Came to see some A-Spec races? Well, that's not till the second half of the LP, buddy. We're completing all of B-Spec first, then A-Spec. Run, boy. <laughs> Come on, Fernandez. Run as fast as you can to the front. Let's take a look at this MR2. Mm. It's a really nice car. Really nice car. Buddy, yes. Gotta be supportive, man. Oh, except for Flynn, because Flynn sucks. Flynn sucked, I should say. <laughs> Deong or Kaong. That, that would be pretty funny. Italian restaurant with a photo of Fiat 500 on the entry? Of course. That is pretty Italian. <laughs> P. Enus is unbeatable. Well, unfortunately, I haven't ran into any Enuses.
Come on, dude. Your car is way bigger. Damn. I think he might have, like, pushed him out the way, but nope. Couldn't get the job done yet. Then again, this race is ridiculously long for whatever reason. Yeah, it don't sound right. <laughs> that is a pretty weird engine sound. Okay. <laughs> Did every single car, well, almost, almost every car sounds vacuumy in this game. And the Japanese cars that have the racing exhaust, ugh, they sound terrible. Like, they all sound like the same, the same Dirt Devil vacuum. these Accord Coupes. I think if I remember correctly, like, it's a US only model, that particular Honda Accord. Because I remember in the Japanese version seeing it in the uh, used car dealership, and it has, like, instead of saying J inside the parentheses, it says US. We have the name Ricardo's replacement at Red Bull. Gasly? Uh, really? Okay. It's not really a surprise. Sounds like a vacuum with, <laughs> with pebbles. <laughs> so it sounds like it's trying to force its way to suck. To suck up everything. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But anyways, um, yeah, that's that's not really a surprise, to be honest. I mean, Gasly it's part of the Red Bull program. It's part of Toro Rosso. And pretty much when Carlos Sainz signed up for McLaren, at that point you just kind of knew, you know, it's going to be Gasly. Yeah, dude, this race is 10 laps. Forces his way to suck. Pause. Yep. Awkward moment of silence. <laughs> okay, Fernandez is now in the lead. Now I can start to cool down a little bit. But anyways, um, yeah, it's not really a surprise at this point. Same way when Alonso announces his IndyCar ambition, not ambitions, his IndyCar program, if it's anything but an Andretti or a McLaren thing, that's, you know, I'll be surprised if it's anything but those, you know. My favorite team already got ruined, so, wait, what's your favorite team? McLaren? Or, not McLaren, uh, jeez, I, I don't know what your favorite team is. I don't think I, I don't think I ever asked you in Formula One. I mean, I just knew you were an Alonso fan, because nationality. Na national pride, but um, yeah, what's your favorite team? Abstract? You're addicted to anime again? I've never really been much of an anime person, really. Oh, Force India! Okay, I'll, I'll tell you about that in a bit. Okay, um, yeah, I I've uh, never really, really been much of an anime person. My sister's really into anime. She tells me about all these animes all the time, and that's why I mentioned Fruit Basket when Antonio said something about, I don't know, I forget what he commented, but yeah, that, um, that's something I'm not really into. Watch High School DxD? I don't know. I, high, is that supposed to be, like, High School of the Dead or something? I don't know. I heard something like that. Like, I don't know. The only anime I'm ever going to watch in my life is Initial D. And I don't know when I'm going to do that. Soon, hopefully. I need to just get off my lazy ass and really go and watch it. Mostly because of Ocon? Okay. Yeah, Esteban Ocon's a really good driver. Why? Because Lawrence Straw rebought it. I mean, I don't know, man. It, it, see, that's the thing. It's like, is Esteban Ocon in danger now? Because Lawrence Stroll bought the team, and y you know that Sergio Perez probably has more money than Lance Stroll does. <laughs> Lance Troll. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, you know Sergio Perez probably has more money than Ocon does. 
because of the Carlos Slim cash, but but yeah, I mean, obviously Lance is gonna get a seat at Force India. There's like no doubt about that. If his dad just bought the team, and then they're gonna have the driver with money in Sergio Perez, apart from Ocon. So it's like, where the hell can Ocon go? I seriously hope his career is not ruined because the kid is massively talented. Lance's trolled your face. <laughs> trolled all of F1. Trolled the whole paddock. He's the ultimate troll. Ooh, the sprinter up to fourth. All right. Okay, well, the 240 RS really isn't that far ahead. I mean... This is the fastest car, but it's not heavily OP'd. Hey, Joe Raider fan, what's up, dude? Stroll showed us something. If you want to race for a team, tell your dad to buy it. Hey, that's what Santino Ferrucci's doing, you know? Like, hey, daddy, uh, I got kicked out of F2. Can you, can you go buy me an IndyCar ride, please? Pretty please? I'll make sure I do the chores at home. Yeah, dude, Auto Ring is a lot of fun. It's so much fun. But yeah, dude, that, that's basically the nature of motorsports nowadays. Money talks, talent walks. Unless you're really lucky. Unless you're really lucky or you've been with like a junior program like Lewis Hamilton was with McLaren's junior program for X amount of years, you know. Even that's not a guarantee. So a little bit of luck does come into it as well. Fernandez is cruising. <laughs> I doubt he has that much money, bro. The Ferrucci Tower. Okay, Fernandez is now at a good pace. Oh, DXC stands for Demon X Demon. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know that because I don't watch anime. Once again, I'm only going by what my sister tells me, bro. No, I, I think his sponsor is one of his dad's friend's construction companies or something. I don't know. He has like a purple number 39 car that kind of reminds me of a throwback Buddy Lazier car, but I don't know. But the demons are good looking, so he's got memes up the sleeve. Did someone say purple? <laughs> PDVSA best sponsor, of course. Engineering the best in racing drivers, such as Pastor Maldonado and EJ Vizo. Ugh. And Milka, wait, did Milka do know? Did she get sponsored by PDVSA? I know she got Sitgo money. Proceeds to paint all cars in Midnight Purple 3. <laughs> Have you seen those model Nato videos that were shown in Venezuela TV years ago? No. What videos? Yeah, I was wrong. Milk Duno wasn't sponsored by um, PDVSA, unlike, uh, what's his face, Vizo was. Yeah, she was sponsored by Sitco, but still, she was a really, really bad Venezuelan driver. What's with that country? You're always producing like... <laughs> no, he doesn't. We don't want him to mess up. I do not want to do this championship again. Because these races are way too long for these cars. 
But um, anyways, yeah, what's with Venezuela always producing either drivers that crash too much, aka Vizo or Maldonado, or drivers that are way too slow, do know. But they're just really strapped with cash. The video all starts saying Pastor Maldonado, el príncipe del velocidad mundial. And if he does, Francisco, you are automatically banned. Banned for life! For jinxing me. <laughs> but yeah, abstract. I'll go check out those videos later. The world prince of speed boy, he's the world prince of crashes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the boy does nothing but crash. Hey, what's going on, Division? How are you? But yeah, what else is new in the world of racing right now? Let's see. Apart from uh, Pierre Gasly signing with Red Bull. Good getting ready to stream on chill here as I get dressed. All right, cool, dude. Glad to have you here. We're just talking about racing and shenanigans right now in the chat. Hey, what's up, Barney? How are you? Pierre Gassy exhaust. <laughs> I mean, like I said, I'm not surprised that he's signed with Red Bull, but I'm really happy that he is. I mean, he's a good, he's a good kid. You know, it's a shame that um, the, rain, the round of Suzuka in the Super Formula Championship rained out, because who knows what would have happened. But yeah. Red Bull's about to get a lot more methane. Oh yeah? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's it. Just shenanigans and news and memes and stuff. That's all we're really doing. Red Bull already pure adre um, adrenaline. What did I do last segment? Uh, British lightweights. That was like at 2 in the morning at my time on Sunday morning. I was super tired, and like Hot Noodles was just like, "Can you do one more race?" I'm like, "Sure, I'll do British lightweights just for you." <laughs> and he ended up leaving like after the first round. I'm like, "Damn it, Noodles, I have to finish this now." <laughs> it's all good, but yeah, today's stream is gonna be short. I'm just doing this and then um, Dream Car Championship because I really need to get some money for um, the LMP cars and the UCD. Anyways, final lap. Why did you stream at morning here, boy? I was asleep. Because I can. <laughs> I can stream whatever I want, boy. Yeah, you were one of the remaining people here. I remember that. <laughs> Got him. Let's check out the rest of the field. I mean, Fernandez is already going to win. Unlike what Francisco says, so let's see what's going on here. Ooh, a little battle for fourth with the Accord and the Sprinter. Something about this Honda City that I really like. I like these kind of boxy cars. The other Sylvia, nowhere near. These are the kind of cars you find like at a junkyard. That Celica needs to be higher in the running order. Arc 7, what is it doing back here? That looks like a car like one of my aunts that I've never met before would drive. And it'd probably be filled with like dirty clothes inside and you know just a big old mess. But anyways, Fernandez coming out of the final corner and easily gonna win. Unlike what Francisco says, because Fernandez is not Flynn nor Malinado. Shigino 86 needs a 13k rev limiter. 
There we go. We win. Jesus Christ. 17 minutes. Almost 18 minutes for this one race. Ugh, this championship sucks. <laughs> so the 86 would be accurate? Yep. Alright, moving on to the second round, which is Sukuba, I believe? I don't know, 18 minutes of that just made me forget what the next championship is. Oh, Deep Forest. Alright. Even better, because it's tough to pass the Sakuba. Rossi will take the wheel. Okay, we have a Lancer. Oh, that's not the Evolution. That's like the square body one. That's right, because it's from the 80s. Well, it looks like we have a little bit of a tougher field this time. I mean... We got a Lancer, a Celica, we have a Supercharger MR2, got a Skyline 2000 in the back, got an Arc 7 in the back, hopefully those guys can work their way to the front, make things a little bit more interesting, but we'll see. Yeah, it's the, um, 1800. And green. Oh, it's reversed, Deforest, alright. Well, Rossi with a good start. Up to fifth. Ooh, how many cars can you get on the outside? Damn, everyone jockeying for position right now. Up to second. Already up to first. Holy crap, Rossi. All right, let's maintain that pace. Just completely smoking the competition. I think this track is way better for the Sylvia than the... Ottoman track is. The most remembered in GT because it's because of its rally variant Lancer. Dude, how's that a how's that Arc 7 stuck behind an Isuzu? How's the Lancer down in 10th now? That's a really nice Lancer. How's the Celica back here? So basically, the MR2 and the Sylvia kind of traded places. Never mind, they're only down to fourth. I thought they were way further back. Okay, that's a cool shot. Them coming down the hill from the reverse. That Arc 7 custom Chipotle fart exhaust is keeping it at the back. Yeah, that's the 60s Lancer. I was just like, wait, what? Because I was, I just read that and I was like, huh? But then I realized, oh, maybe he meant the 60s one as well. Jeez, that arc 7 does sound like crap. <laughs> oh, well, let's let Rossi increase his pace just a little bit more. Because I think that MR2 is going to be tough. I mean, it's like the best of the rest. For sure. I did not mean to hit lower pace. I meant to hit maintain pace. But you know what? It's not a big deal. I mean, his... Pressure, his little meter isn't dropping that much. So let's make up some ground. I think the 80s Arc 7s before the 1990 FC35 or 3S are just bad. Oh, really? can't be that bad though, can they?
How's that Azuzu not in last place? How's the Lancer in last place? Bringing shame to the Lancer name. All right. Let's take a look at the battle for third. A fart cam vacuum cleaner. Analogy of GTPSP 5.6 sound quality and GT Sports just a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, I mean, the, the cars do sound better in sport. You have to give them that at least. You know, that's the thing. In, in this game, some cars just sound amazing, like the 787B or the GT40 race car 69. But other cars, like these Japanese ones, they sound terrible. Like this Sylvia, it sounds like ass, but you know what? In sport, it's just a sportier vacuum with no silence reduction tech. Yeah, I mean, but it's still an improvement. You know, at least you gotta give them that. They sound terrible. <laughs> Damn, Rossi, what happened? What happened to you being cool? Now you're starting to get like all worked up driving this hunk of crap. Well, eh, this Sylvia's not hunk of crap. I just don't like this championship. It's just so long with these cars. Like, five laps is bearable. But in B spec, like driving these cars for 10 laps or commanding these cars and drivers for 10 laps is just, ugh. All the time you can be behind the wheel. R92 and 89, they're supposed to sound like twins. Do they sound the same? Oh, in GT4 they do. I know that. But um, I have no idea. Ooh, Worth in the MR2 is just cruising at this point. Matsuda in the Accord and Horn in the Sylvia. Both of them are going to chase down the MR2. Which, hey, that gives Rossi an opportunity to just relax at this point. Well, not yet. I'd say about lap 7, he could probably just cruise. Gap right now is 15 seconds. So 15 seconds clear of the MR2, and... Damn, okay. We have a little pack here. A little pack of cars. Let's take a look at this battle. The R92 CP and R89 and GT5 and 6 sound more tame, but still the same. I decay if it's the same IRL. Yeah, I I've never... That's weird because I've actually never looked any of the videos up for those cars. Normally I look up like 787 sounds, Audi R8 sounds, and yet that's like the only legendary cars from Gran Turismo I never bothered looking up an IRL video of. Just absolutely dominating right now. Much faster track, kind of lets the Sylvia spread its legs a little bit. Or stretch its legs, I mean. Not spread. <laughs> Jesus Christ, me and my dumb commentary. But yeah, um, a little bit more breathing room. Get more speed. What about the massacred R35? It's mincemeat. You know, I, I can't really recall the sound of the R35 in this game. There's a car that kind of sounds like a whistle. Maybe you guys can't hear it. Maybe headphone users spread and enter the deep forest. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm listening with my headphones right now to the game, and I hear like a like the engine. Rossi's probably struggling with the comfort softs. Like he's struggling to just have a clean lap. I mean, his laps are a little sloppy, but they're still fast. I mean, what's the second fastest lap? Jesus Christ, he's about two to three seconds faster than most of these guys. Oh, wow.
Yeah, I didn't have to go through all the names. I kind of went to live timing monitor. In R the R34 and GT4 sounds godlike. Are you talking about the stock model? Okay, interesting. Eventually when Marvin uploads his um, mission 22, I think it is, the um, test course drafting mission at, or not at test course, because <laughs> I already said test course, the drafting mission at test course with the R34s. Let's take a listen from there. Yes, exactly. That's immediately what came to mind for me. Hey, Gran Turismo fan, how are you? Good to see you here, brother. Oh my god, this Lancer sounds like... Sounds like ass. Good lord. I mean, then again, I don't really care about the engine sounds too much. I don't know, it's, it's just like... If the game's still fun... And that's what really matters at the end of the day. Nice snowman metallic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now we got a real battle here. Wow, I thought Akiyama was going to go into the grass. Yeah, I, I don't know why they changed the sound of the Red Bull in 6. Like, in 6 it sounds so stupid. Like, the engine sound in 5, it, it just sounds... It, it sounded good as it was, you know? Talking about the little Toyota GT1 glitch or what? We go that fast. In six, it sounds like someone went to Taco Bell, then Chipotle, and is taking a dump. <laughs> Jesus Christ, TMI, bro. TMI. Does this car go? It looks like it's gonna top out like at 120. It has like just enough speed to make it to the end of this straight. I thought this thing would probably do like 140 tops, not like 120. It's already hitting, it's already hitting that red part of the RPM. Not even close to 1% of the 100% required to be enough.
almost there to the end. Getting closer and closer. Worth is starting to relax, and so is Akiyama. Also, whoever says anime is for kids and doesn't have common sense. I mean, look. Same thing when people say that cartoons are for children only. You know, which is why, like, I get upset whenever people are like, well, you know, it's okay if new Spongebob sucks because it's for kids, dude. But it's just like, yeah, but that doesn't mean that it's good. You know, like, the writing is terrible. You know, when Spongebob used to be really good in the first, like, three seasons. Okay, these three just, not three, these two just pretty much gave up. Or three. Horn has a pretty decent lead over Matsuda. Nope, not anymore. Because he's given up. But yeah, I mean, the same thing applies to animes too, you know, where it's just like, just because it's... Exactly, you know? It's, it's for everyone. That's why... That's why whenever, like, I'll give... My best example is because I'm not really into anime, nor am I really into TV or movies that much. You know, I'm more into gaming oh, and motor racing, but that's a whole different story. I'll give gaming as an example. I know in Europe you guys have Peggy, but I'm going to use the ESRB here in the States as my example because I don't know the Peggy system that well, like the numbers and all that. When a game is rated E for everyone, that typically means that you can play, you know, ages 7 and up can play that game. So when a game's rated E, does that automatically mean it's only for children? No, because it's intended for every single audience. You know what I mean? Like, every audience can play it. It doesn't mean rated 7 for only 7-year-olds. So the same thing with um, TV, you know, with cartoons and stuff. When you go and watch a cartoon, and you see, like, the little rating, like, TV Y7 over here in the state, that means, same thing, youth 7 years old around there. That's what SpongeBob was rated. Then... You know, it's meant for all audiences. So the idea that... Well, okay, look, I I'll tell you something. Obviously, some stuff is meant for children only, like educational, you know, e like educational cartoons and stuff, like for little, ch you know, for little kids. You know, that I can understand when people say it's only for, for children, blah, blah, blah. But, like, things like Spongebob, things for, like, a little bit older kids, like, around, like, seven years old and stuff, that's not necessarily, like, an educational tool, that's different, you know? Peggy uses three, seven, twelve, six, and eight. Okay, so I could kind of see it. So, like, three is supposed to be our version of EC, seven is supposed to be E, twelve is supposed to be teen, sixteen is supposed to be M, and eight is supposed to be AO, which no game gets AO. Because if there is an AO game here in the States, it's pretty much unsellable in stores. You'd have to get it, like, exclusively through online retailers or something. Gran Turismo is 3+. plus. Over here, Gran Turismo is E for everyone. And if you look on the back of the case, at least Gran Turismo 3, it cracks me up because like the only like warning that they give to parents is mild lyrics. I'm pretty sure that's because of Turbo Lover being on the, on the um, soundtrack. Manhunt is AO. I, I thought it was M. I know San Andreas was AO for like a really short amount of time and they went and made the changes and made it M or they got rid of all the coding for the hot coffee. But yeah, um, pretty much that's why Manhunt was unsellable. No retailers will accept an AO game, you know, because it's, it's pretty much a hard pitch. It's hard to sell an AO game. But luckily, Gran Turismo is not AO, so that means I could play it on my channel. And I could buy it in store. This game's really cheap nowadays. It's like $5. Anyways, 80s festival complete, and that means every single professional series event is complete. In Australia, Manhunt is a crime to own. Well, same with the guy game. The guy game is a crime to own here. Yay, we win a pizza! And a level 12 car. Alright. Alright, let's get our Zuzu pizza.
in before somebody spells Piazza correctly. It's like. <laughs> GT3 was $2, GT5 was $4. Nice. Yeah, dude, this game is like $4.99 in um, most retailers, like GameStop and stuff. And then some smaller game stores too, like some mom and pop shops will actually sell it for like $3.99. Or <laughs> Hot Covev. Covevfi. <laughs> All right, before we open up our coupon, let's go take a look at the Isuzu Pizza. Piazza Pizza. Plaza. Here it is, Sunrise Red. Not bad. I mean, it's a cool little car. I actually like these. Moment of truth. What level 12 car do we get? Please be something good. Please be something good. Piazza the Pizza. <laughs> Crossing my fingers. It's premium! Okay! It has lights! What the hell is that? Why would I want a GTR with a black mask? Why not just give me a standard GTR? Alright! It is ugly, dude. So, next time on GT5 Beast Back, we're gonna do the Dream Car Championship. And I'm gonna drown my head into my arms in sorrow because why did we get this car?